Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. Homeowners are now $1 trillion richer thanks to this housing boom. And in today's housing market update, I'm going to share all the details about this new report that was just issued today, plus a lot of other real estate market updates. But first, I want to thank housingwire.com for sponsoring today's video. They are a great source for the latest news and information for the U.S. mortgage and housing markets. Now, housingwire.com is not paying me to say this. I look on their website on a daily basis and I find a lot of their information is very useful when I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the real estate market and also researching housing market updates just like this one. I'm mentioning this because I have really good news I'm really excited to share with you today and that is because they are hooking you up, my viewers and subscribers, with a 50% off discount off their premium annual or quarterly membership and that is called Housing Wire Plus. This is their in-depth analysis of our housing market and mortgage industries with articles and resources that you cannot find on their regular website. So if you want 50% off this service, then go to housingwire.com and use the coupon code Jason 50% off and sign up for Housing Wire Plus. Again, I'm not getting paid to offer this service to you. Uh, it's just my goal to deliver as much value as I possibly can to my viewers and subscribers. So thank you so much for all your support. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the video and first go over CoreLogic's latest home equity report. And that was for the third quarter of 2020. And they reported that the amount of equity in mortgage real estate increased by $1 trillion in the third quarter of 2020 from the third quarter of 2019. This was an annual increase of 10.8%. Borrower equity has reached a record high in Q3 and borrowers have gained nearly $7 trillion in equity over the last 10 years. Because of this record high amount of equity, only 3% of the homes in the U.S. have negative equity. In other words, 97% have equity in their homes, which basically means that their homes are worth more than their remaining mortgage balance. The reason why the U.S. has a record amount of equity is because of soaring home prices. So for example, in the U.S., the median home price has hit a record high. Prospective home buyers are competing for the low amount of supply of houses available for sale right now, and that is pushing up home prices as well as people's home equity. However, CoreLogic forecasts that home prices will slow over the next 12 months as new home construction and more existing for sale houses ease supply pressures. This could slow the pace of both home price growth and equity gains. For example, new home builders are playing catch up to this high buyer demand and have ramped up construction of new houses. So according to the U.S. Census Bureau, housing starts for single family houses increased 29.4% from October 2019 to October 2020. However, single-family homes completed are down 4% in that same time period. Typically, there's a four to nine month lag from when builders start building houses to when they're ultimately constructed or completed and homeowners can move in. Therefore, we probably won't see a lot of easing of inventory from new houses until early or mid next year. Before we go back to this report and also a lot of other real estate market updates to share with you today, I just want to say please hit the like button. If you appreciate real estate market updates just like this one, videos like these tend to take hours to make with all the research involved. So I really appreciate it if you just hit the like button. Also, don't forget to get your four free stocks compliments of Webull because for a limited time, they're giving you four free stocks when you deposit $100 on the platform. I'll leave a link in the description below and that promotion is running for a limited time. Going back to CoreLogic's report, let's talk about the states that have the highest amount of negative equity in their houses, meaning that their houses are worth less than what they owe on their mortgage. Louisiana has by far the highest amount of negative equity in the nation at 8.9%. That's nearly three times the national average. Louisiana is followed by Illinois and Iowa to round up the top three. There's no big surprises here, but the states with the highest negative equity have the slowest price appreciation. California is not on this list because home prices have increased drastically when you compare it to one year ago. So much so that we're up almost 18% compared to one year ago. And this, of course, has caused people's equities in their houses to skyrocket. 
In mortgage news, the Mortgage Bankers Association reported that mortgage applications decreased 1.2% from one week earlier. However, the MBA's refinance index increased 2% from the previous week and was 89% higher than the same week one year ago. Also, their unadjusted purchase index increased 20% compared to the previous week and was 22% higher than the same week one year ago. The increase of refi activity is obviously due to record low interest rates. So according to Freddie Mac, they actually just announced today at the time of this video that the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage in the U.S. remained at record levels of 2.71%. Rates have hit record lows 14 times this year. Another trend that we're seeing right now is that the vast majority of mortgage applications were from refinances, and this represented about 72% of the total applications out there. Meanwhile, as the housing market is surging ahead, the economy is lagging behind. It was announced today that another 853,000 Americans filed new unemployment claims last week. This is much higher than the 725,000 that was expected and 141,000 higher than the previous week. Additionally, new weekly unemployment claims are now about four times greater than they were before this pandemic when they were averaging about 200,000 per week. We are down from a pandemic high of 6.9 million but we still have a ways to go before our unemployment numbers goes back down to pre-pandemic levels. In the meantime, COVID is absolutely surging right now. The U.S. reached its highest daily death toll yesterday with 3,054 deaths. That's more than the 2,977 deaths that we had from 9-11. CDC Director Robert Redfield said that for the next 60 to 90 days, we're likely to have more deaths per day from COVID in the U.S. than we had on 9-11 or Pearl Harbor. So stay safe out there, friends. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. That helps support this channel. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, I post videos about how this pandemic is affecting our real estate market, and I really enjoy making these videos for you. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Sacramento Realtor. Hope you have an awesome day, and look forward to seeing you on the next video.